Yes. This title is not meant to be negative at all. No, it's a good, it, it, it's a good thing. I thought that by this time in high school, people would have grown out of the typical Ching Ching Chong joke, which everybody has heard already several times. And, um, and to be honest, like, the, it just makes me think that, you know, why are people so content in being, for lack of a better term, annoyingly ignorant? Those sounds don't exist in Mandarin, or Cantonese, nor any Asian language I've ever heard of. And it made me think that there is a gap between people who speak uh, either a different or multiple languages versus people who only think that they only need to speak one language. And I feel like America serves to be a hotspot for interaction between these groups of people. Like, as uh, I kind of speak Chinese, and so uh, when people come up to me who want to speak English, and they're like, oh, it's like, hello, are you Chinese or Korean or whatever? And then it's like, do you eat, like, fried noodles and fried rice all day? And I'm like, I wouldn't be against that, but no, I don't. That is not representative of Chinese culture. And yet, I'm also part of that group that asks those questions in a way, in the sense that as a second generation Chinese American, I mainly speak English. I am best at English, and my Chinese is comparatively very poor. And um, I feel like that applies to many uh, preceding, like succeeding generations for people who live in a different country. Now, here is a representation of me, not this one, me, and her, which is my sister. My sister is an anomaly, a great example of an ABC who speaks Chinese, oh, ABC means American born Chinese, uh, ABC who speaks Chinese perfectly, fluently. And she learned that by watching, when she was young, Chinese World War II flicks and dramas and variety shows. Me, on the other hand, I westernized quite quickly. That's probably why I spoke English first, and she spoke Chinese first when she was young. And, you know, it was only at this time in high school that I really uh, realized just, I'm not happy. Just uh, not being able to speak Chinese as was my family. And for a long time, I didn't really mind that. But it's now that I've, I've noticed that I've subconsciously held back the fact that my proficiency in Chinese is inferior to my family because there's really not a lot of opportunities to use it, and when I can use it, I don't. And uh, I realize the importance of learning a language, any language, not just me learning Chinese. Uh, that what comes off as childish and cute when I would get basic words in Chinese wrong when I was young turns into pity and disappointment when I'm older and I actually get exposed to these people who speak other languages. Now, my anecdote mainly only applies to second or third gen people who don't really feel a need to really study and improve their ethnic tongue. But, as a population, only 20.7% of Americans know a second language. Now compare that to Europe, with 66% of Europeans knowing a second language, and overall in the world, kind of similar to Europe, 60%. Now that's a pretty big difference. That is a incredible difference, and I guess I could maybe be part of the 20.7% if I don't speak it that fluently, so I guess not. I'm part of the 80% who do not. And I feel like the 80%, as a majority, I cannot, I, I can understand that as a majority, Americans are content with speaking English, they're comfortable, and therefore you know, they don't really feel a need to do more than that, because everyone around them speaks like that. If everyone speaks English, I will only speak English. But that mindset, I don't quite agree with, and I think it is very important to try to learn a language. Now, to explain why you need, you need to learn a language, I can go into reasons like, I don't know, you know, 
learning languages offers more employment opportunities, which is true. But no, nothing far along like that because we are teenagers. We have not thought that far in the future yet. And I'd rather not for now. Uh, to me, learning a language, in many cases, like philosophy. You don't learn because you need to. You learn to understand the world better and widen your perspective, understand whole new ways of thinking, and ultimately even improve your own character and judgment. Like people who speak different languages, and like how I've talked to them, they, they, they act differently. They are more tolerant in general of, uh, they can, they, they don't try to, to like make, unintentionally make stereotypes like, you know, low man or ching ching chong, because they know better than that. And, and yeah, there are all these benefits of learning language, but in my school, why is it that people would rather learn philosophy instead of a language? Why do people almost seem to avoid trying to learn another form of speaking, another form of communication. To me, the problem is, as a population, there seems to be a stigma regarding uh, learning languages. I went to a Chinese school for five years, uh, from kindergarten to fourth grade. And frankly there, I mean, I didn't really learn much, one, because the ineffective curriculum, but also because the kids there, who were mostly Chinese, didn't really care about it. They didn't really learn about it. In fact, they would even, like a friend told me that, uh, who was in that Chinese school, that she was teased for working hard and doing well on the tests. Because, you know, you, you, and part of the curriculum is like, you didn't have to do well on tests, you could, you could F it, you could bomb it, and you'd still go on to the next level. And so it just wasn't a, a big time commitment. No one really cared about it. I didn't really care about it as a result. And uh, now I feel like that is my biggest handicap not really taking advantage of what little opportunity I had. Now there's a whole half of me that I can't probably interact with. A group of people and potential friends that I don't have because I can't speak the language. I, I mean, I, at least, you get my point. <laughs> As a Chinese American, I am painfully aware of the fact that when I silently sit, especially when I silently sit down with my parents, friends in China, and simply nod and say an uh, occasional, you know, thank you, xie or ni hao, and nervously laugh. <laughs> but what about my audience right now? That's either watching this video or sitting off to the side right there. Those who have another ethnicity, but choose to not associate with it for whatever reason, or the ones with only English background and don't even realize the parts that they're missing. What's the problem? The stigma, the trauma, or the barrier that prevents you from learning just another language. And to the only English speakers, you know, as soon as I start speaking Chinese, like, and I mean, you don't understand that. Again, because you don't understand it. Simple as that. There's a gap that you are not willing to bridge. And I just want to ask you, why do you restrict yourselves in a bubble? The internet has millions of resources to learn whatever language and extend your horizons to whatever direction you wish. But people choose to only be everything English. Because that's what's natural. That's what's comfortable. And honestly, I can't really argue with that. This blank screen, you know, I, I don't really have an argument for that. Because that's essentially what Americans are at this point, because that's the majority, and they seem to live just fine, right? I still call that blissful ignorance. That's, well, that's my opinion. If there's anything to take away from this talk, is that languages are like philosophy classes, not needed, but they can be engaging and deep, and they can allow you to widen your perspective and appreciate the world more. However, at the same time, both languages and philosophy are indispensable when it comes to understanding the bigger picture. Those who choose not to know, will not know. And this is what creates the language barrier. Many times, as a result, those ignorant stereotypes like Ching Ching Chong persist to today's age. Now, I don't typically have a problem with 
these stereotypes at this point because I know there will always be stereotypes no matter where you go. But what I do care little is people who don't, uh, who, who turn a blind eye to not learning another language and they don't even try to understand someone else's annoyance when they say just things that don't represent their language or culture at all. Like, I start to speak Chinese. You can't hear them. You don't have to learn. And see again, you didn't understand that. I don't think you will kind of try to understand what that was. Uh, that was pretty trash Chinese right there. But um, <laughs> see, this is where the gap is. The gap between one person and another person who speak different languages. And this gap is what creates all this um, miscommunication and misinformed opinion. See, you know, they can't talk to each other, right? It's like a massive jumble because one person does not really want to listen. But I'm trying to change that myself, by changing myself. I am trying to be a little bit more like my sister now. I st I'm starting to sit for 30 more seconds and watching a Chinese drama or World War II flick or variety shows. And uh, even, e even today, my sister still watches those kind of shows, and so I just watch whatever she watches. And slowly, I am learning, slowly but surely, how to become more Asian. Uh, and honestly, it feels pretty nice knowing that, like, understanding language more and being able to actually begin to converse with other people. And miscommunication, guys. Miscommunication. There's, um, and as such, what I've learned uh, can all be ended in, and, this and this talk and presentation with this one word, which is not bibliography, but one, which means the end. Thank you.